Max? Uh-oh. Hit that air aid siren. It's time for Monday Morning Fallout. Monday Morning Fallout, of course, when we overreact to everything from the football weekend. That's nice true. and stretched out for overreacting. I, I'll i be here. Do you do your Pilates? I'm fine. And your, I'm, I'll be right here. You do your... I will be right here, Mr. Anti-Small Business. Your yoga. Let's get into it. <laughs> Three big thoughts. Okay. All right. Three big thoughts. I put up the right graphic. Good. Thank God. Separation week. We knew that week five of the Texas high school football season was going to be a big one. There were a lot of really important, interesting, and compelling games across the state because they pit two teams that we think highly of against one another. And inevitably, there was going to be a little bit of separation. Now, how much separation was going to be determined, but we got some separation. I look specifically down at the game in San Antonio. Cibolo Steel and Converse Judson. Cibolo Steel comes away with a 30-9 to win. In a vacuum, stop right there, really impressive, right? That's a super impressive win over a previously unbeaten and largely unchallenged Converse Judson sure. squad. Really impressive. The fact that they did that without their starting quarterback. They did that with their backup quarterback, Cody Massey, who was solid. Yeah. Not spectacular. Mm -hmm. Didn't need to be. Defense did their part. Yep. And that's what separated it for me, is that they are, Cibolo Steel is now, unquestionably, the number one team in San Antonio and is the team to beat in the Alamo City, and you could make a real argument, is the team to beat in Region 4. Sure. What they did was really, really impressive, and that's the kind of separation that we're talking about. The DeSoto-Cedar Hill game, there was some separation, but I don't know, this is, again, something that's probably not going to win me friends and influence people. I don't know if I came away ultra impressed with uh, by either team. Sure. You were at the game. I felt like Cedar Hill, there's just something a little bit off about them. We'll get into them in a moment. Sure. DeSoto, good. Solid defensive effort. The running game continues to impress. Sean Robinson looks like he's taking a step forward. Overall, uh, though. Yeah. Look, my overall takeaway, we talked about this. Um, I, I, I do think part of this is influenced from watching that KD team last year and being so impressed by their defensive speed. Mm -hmm. DeSoto has that. Not, not at the same yeah. level. But of any team that I've seen so far this year, um, maybe they don't necessarily have the size and physicality uh, mm -hmm. of, of great defensive teams, but I don't know how you get around them or over the top of them. Yeah. Um, Cedar Hill has weapons. That's not an issue. Now, we can talk back and forth about you know, whether the approach is, is right for them right now, uh, whether they, they're struggling to find a rhythm, what that's about. I don't know. But, um, boy, I just – like I said, I cannot imagine – anyone being better than them on defense especially from a speed perspective yeah. it's hard to get around the edge mm -hmm. uh i don't know how you beat them over the top uh if they keep playing that way or if they improve which you expect mm -hmm. they would at this point boy you know it's going to be tough it's going to be tough to stop them now can they do it six games in a row when, when it matters against really good teams we'll see but boy they were defensively that's what stood out you knew sean robinson was going to be good you knew nixon was going to be good all that stuff makes sense uh and they did it without their first string running back who basically went out after the first series mm -hmm. so i was really impressed i mean i get you know we talked about this, well, i get a little scared because the minute you get on the desoto bandwagon it feels like the things wheels fall, fall apart yeah uh but right now i'm i'm high on them i just don't see the 6a field as a you know i don't see there being a clear contender right now on paper thought number two how much data do you need that's a good question and I mean this specifically in the college ranks. So Texas A&M goes and gets, I think, a pretty impressive win over Arkansas. Right, I see where you're going with this. Yeah, pretty impressive right. win. Is Arkansas is what is Arkansas the 17th best team in the country? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I do think they're a top 25 team, though. I do think they're a top yeah. 25 team. Baylor is another right. interesting example. Right, that Baylor plays really. Really, they're, I mean, let's be real. Their first team that can give them a fight. And they get a fight, but they come out with a win. And they, they win based on a little bit of red zone defense, a little bit of luck. Yeah. They, they got a, a key fumble there. Mm -hmm. um, they got some kind of, you know, some baffling coaching decisions by uh, Mike Gundy. Sure. But they come away with a win. Right. 
I, and, and look, uh, not the cl- I, I think I wrote this, not the cleanest game, mm-hmm. um, but I thought Baylor improved, mm-hmm. and I don't ever think watching stem to stern, mm-hmm. don't ever feel like it was in doubt. Felt like Baylor was the better yeah. team the whole way. I feel I, I agree. I feel like if I think feel like Oklahoma State could have won that game, right? But I would have I would have come away feeling like. Baylor then gave it away. Right, exactly. That would have been my it, thought. It did not feel like uh, tit for tat exactly. that they were the same level. My question is, we're now four games in for right. both yeah. A&M and Baylor. And do we have enough data That's a good question. to really make a judgment? Right. Baylor's, go- Baylor's now a top 15 team, is that right, in the, right. In the, sta- in the nation? Yes. I think that's right. I believe they're 13th now. I think that's right. Texas A&M number nine. Yeah. Do we have enough data to suggest that? Yeah, they're definitely a top ten team, a top fifteen team. I don't know. I don't know. I also I have questions about who they've played. I don't right. know if Auburn's that good. I don't know right. if Arkansas's that good. Yeah. But you know what? You play who's on your schedule. You do play who's on your schedule. I look at the schedule now, especially with everything going on uh, in the SEC West. Mm-hmm. And suddenly it becomes well. I don't think they're going to beat Alabama. No, I have seen plenty of Aggies on Twitter who think especially Alabama is suddenly scared of Texas A and M, and they're not. Especially I in Tuscaloosa, I have a hard especially time. Especially in Tuscaloosa, uh, but I'm starting to think, you know, your rubber meets the road games. If you can, I think Ole Miss is the big game. Mm-hmm. You beat Ole Miss, you could end up being the second place team in the SEC West. Mm-hmm. Uh, bad SEC East if you beat Tennessee, right? Bad SEC East emerges on the other side. Alabama kills the team in the title game, and you might be the fourth team Mm -hmm. in the playoff as the Mm -hmm. second-place team in the SEC West. That's a possibility. It's a possibility, especially if, you know, they need – A&M needs UCLA to keep doing well. That's basically – because that's their their signature non-conference win. Thought number three, every game matters. And that seems pretty basic, but I was thinking about this as we were watching the results come in on Friday night. That now that we're in district play, Mm -hmm. it's not just about winning your district. It's about getting seeded. And, for example, Cedar Hill, probably going on the road again for week one of the the playoffs. They're probably going to play at Copper's Cove. Right. And they're better than Copper's Cove. Right. But on the road, a team that's kind of struggled to get a rhythm together. Right. Every game, I mean, I know that that seems very basic and something that, that... you are paying attention to, but look a little deeper because these tiebreakers are going to start coming into effect, and every every game is an important one. Just play three helmet stickers. Let me get my helmet here. We need, to get, some, we need to get some helmet stickers. I guess so. Yeah, get my helmet. <laughs> Fort Worth South Hills running back Kyron Johnson, 15 carries, 298 yards, and six touchdowns. Not Apparently, bad. he had an 80 yard touchdown called back due to due to holding or something. Kyron go, Johnson holding, from Fort Worth South Hills line. gets a helmet sticker. Houston athlete De'Eric King. Already, man. He had a passing touchdown. Yep. He had a receiving touchdown. Yep. He had a kickoff return touchdown. Pretty good. Pretty nice little day for Mr. King out of Manville. And I think we're going to see more of him now with uh, the mobile car injury. I think you're right. Yeah. And Humble Summer Creek running back Miles Wanza. 250 yards and five touchdowns doing work for Summer Creek. Those are my helmet stickers. Three teams to watch. White Oak. Man. Boy, howdy. They are playing well. They are playing They're really, playing really well. well, and they pretty much beat Harmony at their own game. They outgunned them. Yeah. They came up with a couple of stops, and White Oak moves to 5-0 and on the year with an impressive win over, over a previously unbeaten Harmony team. I'm buying it on this White Oak team. If they can get a little bit more defense, then I think that they've got they've got a shot to make a real deep run in 3 AD one North Texas. The Mean Green. The Mean Green go to double overtime with Rice and come away with a great win. Congratulations to Seth Luttrell and company. They are 2-2. Two and two, 500. Impressive stuff there. And Groveton. Groveton cracks our rankings this week with an impressive win last week. They are now 4-1. and one. Team to keep an eye on. They can put up in points in bunches, and I think maybe this uh, this is the year where they put up so many that uh, any defensive issues might uh, get carried. Three teams to worry about. Let's talk about Cedar Hill. Yeah. We talked about them a little bit, but this is a – there is just something off about them. Sure. The offensive line we knew was going to be a bit of an issue, and it is. But Avery Davis doesn't look like he's comfortable back there, and they're making very uncharacteristic mistakes. They're blowing coverages. Yeah. They are – I don't know. They're just – there's something off about them. I don't know what it is. I will say, I, I don't know if it was a game planning thing or just not realizing the speed in person, but they really struggled. And look, uh, any coach will tell you this is tough. 
Sean Robinson's lateral speed. Mm-hmm. You know, he gets in trouble. He runs to the edge or design runs. They just could not stop him. Mm-hmm. He would get to the sideline and go. And and part of that is not just the speed. Some of the some of their players could match up with him and stay with him. He's so strong from the waist down mm-hmm. that trying to leg tackle him, get a big guy to come down by going at the knees or anything, it just wasn't working. And and you wonder. I, I don't know. Is that just a we tried, we had a plan, it didn't work, he's just too strong, or should they have been more prepared for how tough he would be to contain when he got loose? I'm worried about SMU. It's clear that losing Matt Davis hurts that offense just three points against TCU, and really it's not like that's – that's it's not like they got held off, like they turned the ball over in key right. situations. Like they just didn't look good yeah. offensively. And now give a lot of credit to TCU. That defense looked great, but yeah. – I don't know that SMU offense. That's two. That's two weeks in a row. I think. I think a lot of this, uh, you know, the SMU struggles. I think a lot of it speaks to just how dire the recruiting situation was the the, mm-hmm. the year before Chad Morris got there. Because those are the guys right now mm-hmm. that should be filling out and being the guys that should be the bridge between who he's recruited and, and the senior leadership. And it's just not there so far. And shallow water. Shallow Water's 0-4. Lost to Lubbock High. Congratulations to our good friend Strunky. Um, Jason Strunk out there at Lubbock High. But uh, in, a disappointing start for Shallow Water. Can they turn it around? Absolutely. But 0-4 is not a good look for the Mustangs. 